The Jewish General Hospital was one of Montreal's first designated COVID-19 treatment centres as the virus began to take hold. Its ICU has now treated nearly 300 critically ill COVID patients. We're worried about that younger patient population. We're worried about the longer length of stays. The reality of each wave is different. Inside, 46-year-old Ramtin Saidi struggles to catch his breath enough to speak, but he tries. La première jour que je suis arrivé ici, j'étais en train de mourir vraiment. C'est la COVID, c'est c'est vraiment incroyable, c'est vraiment difficile, difficile à dire. He's emotional as he praises the doctors and nurses who have helped him since he was admitted to the hospital earlier this month, sick with the variant first detected in the UK. In the ICU, the COVID waves have blurred into a relentless grind. We've been doing this consistently for over a year now, which is exhausting. We're all kind of tired of it. We're hoping that the third wave is the final wave. It all depends on how effectively we can get the vaccine into people. Saidi's whole family was infected. His wife and two children are now recovered, and his doctor says his condition is improving. So he's, you know, came in and has responded quite nicely to our therapy. So what we saw was uh, the amount of oxygen we needed to give him came down. And really the major thing is just looking at that trajectory. But down the hall, it's a different story. Sanatul Ferdouche barely recognizes her husband of 29 years, Shamim Mohammed. The 62-year-old has been sick since March. All the time he said, wear a mask, wear this and that. He was like extra, extra conscious. But he works in a restaurant kitchen, and despite his precautions, his wife thinks he caught the virus from a co-worker during their lunch break. She and one of their children were also infected. For me, it's, it's a big tsunami. It's ruined my life. It's everything. I don't have, I am, I have nothing. I don't have any family. I don't have nobody without him. Just two years before. She showed us this picture of her and Mohammed taken two years ago. She can't believe how much the virus has changed him. Some people say COVID doesn't exist. If it's not exist, then what is it? My question is, what is it? Please, 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 please. It's been a long haul for Muhammad's family. He's been in the ICU for more than a month, but Dr. Blair Schwartz urges Ferdouche to be patient. This is going to take a very long time. Because the trajectory of the virus can be so hard to predict. The frustrating part is I don't know what's going to happen to his lungs. And so while we've seen lots of people spend weeks to months on a ventilator and ultimately go home and we get these amazing stories that they get better, sometimes that doesn't happen. And I think the frustrating part as a doc is I don't know. <laughs> Families stepped out. After more than a year of uncertainty, staff are bracing themselves in case this wave gets worse. Do you have to like brace yourself for that? You know, do you have the energy? Do I have the energy? I'm trying to convince, convince myself that I do have the energy, yes. The stark reality of COVID-19 is the day-to-day -day here. So it's hard for staff when they encounter patients who don't even believe in the virus that's making them sick. We have a few people who don't believe in COVID. We have people, a few people who have COVID who don't believe in COVID, which is awkward because it's hard to treat them at that point. We have to try and persuade people that we really do know what we're talking about. We've treated a lot of patients with this condition at this point. Warshawski says ICU patients in the third wave are younger, in part because more older people are now protected by vaccines. But these patients stay longer and more of them need to be put on ventilators. Take a nice big breath for me, okay? Big breath. Yeah. This is a procedure reserved for some of the sickest patients, with oxygen levels so low they need help from a machine to breathe. The decision was made to intubate um, to try to save this patient. That's respiratory therapist Krishni Francis at the head of the bed. The potential exposure to the virus in moments like this is what she and other healthcare workers grapple with daily. We're putting the patient to sleep uh, with medication and uh, inserting the airway, which is very risky. This patient was stabilized, but could have weeks or even months ahead of him in the ICU. Patient getting transferred to trauma elevators. Saidi is doing well enough to leave the unit. A cleaning crew follows behind to wipe down any surface he might touch along the way. He's since been sent home.
for Dr. Schwartz, seeing some patients improve and eventually get better has kept him going. That's the hope that we keep. That's what keeps the team motivated, moralized, and it's what we're able to say to the family every day and say, listen, I know this is tough, and I know he looks sick, and I know he doesn't look anything like the man you knew and love, but we've gotten people like this back to that. And that's really, for me, what keeps it. And that's the, the story of COVID, is where this COVID coaster is going to go. And as patients keep coming in, that unpredictable roller coaster continues. And Alison Northcott joins us now from Montreal. So Alison, the exhaustion from everyone there, the patients, the staff, it just jumps out at you. But what else are they saying is tangibly different about this moment in the COVID crisis? Well, the patients being treated in this ICU now are primarily in their 60s and 70s, though some are younger. And the way they're different from the patients in the first wave, who are mostly in their 80s and 90s, is that these patients tend to stay in the ICU for longer. And although their prognosis may be better, they tend to have a difficult and long recovery ahead of them. I spoke with the wife of Shamim Mohammed, who we saw in that story, and she says that her husband's condition has not really changed that much since I saw him in the ICU and she remains very worried about him. So hard. Allison Northcott in Montreal this evening. Thank you. You're welcome.